Hi, this is Geshe Michael Roach. I'd like to welcome you back to Tibetan Translator class. We are con uh, continuing through a book called Lekshe Junwang, uh, which is a book uh, written by the 18th century author uh, Yangchen Drupit Dorje about the subject of Tibetan grammar. If you can get through this text with me, uh, we can start parsing Tibetan sentences correctly. And it's just a little bit of good old-fashioned hard work that you have to do to be a translator. So we have uh, covered uh, his traditional, uh, what we call chujju, which is an uh, uh, offering of praise at the beginning of a text, normally made by bowing down to a high being. He has bowed down to his teacher, uh, who he says is indivisible from Manjushri, which is all the wisdom of the Buddha, incarnate. So now we've reached a part called Sombar Damjawa. Say Sombar. Tamchawa. Tamcha, you know, means samaya, like a, pl a pledge. And then uh, somba means to undertake something. It's, it's exactly the same as the English word undertake. So it can also mean a project or something like that. But here it means to undertake a composition. So somba can mean a uh, composition. So somba damcha, in this verse, he's going to pledge to write his uh, brief summary of all Tibetan grammar. So let's do this together. Ta, ta naro, naro, to, to na, na tun. tun. Notice the change in the vowel, value of the vowel O. It changes to U. It becomes umlauted. Ta, ta naro, naro, to, to na, na tun. Tun, tun, tun mi. Tun okay? Tun mi is a reference to? Tun, tun mi sampota. And, and, you know, even while we were preparing for this class, We've seen his name misspelled in many, many different ways. We, we even saw this. Uh, so you may see many different versions of the spelling of his name, and you have to, when you're using the database, you have to learn to look for different versions. So Tumi is a reference to Tumi Sambota, who brought back the Tibetan alphabet and Tibetan grammar uh, so that Buddhism could be written down in the Tibetan language. Before that, it was all yaks, okay? And there was no written language, and there were no books. 99% uh, of Tibetan literature up to modern times has been Buddhist scriptures, okay? There was not much fiction to speak of. Uh, so, to me, say, to me, to me. of to me Sambhota, Lekshe. Lekshe. We had Lekshe already, fine explanation. His own book is, is called Lekshe. This book itself is called Lekshe. But now he's crediting to me with a Lekshe. His fine book of explanation called what? Sum Chupa, we've already had that. The 30, okay? And again, I'm sorry, I don't know if that's 30 verses or 30 consonants, but it's, it's either or both. Okay, I'll, I'll check it for you. Sum Chupa, The 30, okay? Tumi's great book called The 30. Ningbo, say sa, nyatak, nya, high tone, nya. Giku, ni, nga, ning. Ning means the heart. Ning po means the heart or the essence. So he's going to write the essence. Mao. Da. Notice the pre nasal, the slight French N sound or nasal sound in front of the D. Mao. Nda. Naro. Ndo. What does ndo mean by itself? Sutra. Yeah, sutra or a short book. Do means a, a book or a crux or a crossroads. So it's uh, do, and then when you add the adverbial r on it, which we'll study, which is like an ly in English, say ndor. It means it comes to mean briefly, okay? Briefly or in brief, okay? Dor, pao, sa, datak, da, shapku, du, sa. Du. Du. It's umlauted and lengthened in compensation for the loss of the suffix letter. We don't say dus. We say du. Okay? And then the, the listener knows there was an S there. Du. Okay? Say don du. This is an idiom. Don du goes together and it means briefly. Okay? In brief. Okay? Du means to summarize. Okay? Tsong uh, du means a meeting, for example. Uh, coming together. Okay? So, dor du, pao, sha, da, she, pa, ra, 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 pa,
पार भा या तक छा शेपा वी हैड अप हियर मींस टू एक्सप्लेन ओके शेपा एंड द आर अगेन इज एडवर्बियल और आई विल इट कनेक्ट्स शेपा विथ छा छा इज द फ्यूचर टेंस ऑफ द वर्ब शेपा व्हिच मींस टू डू एंड इट मींस आई विल ओके आई विल डू an explanation in brief uh which gives you the essence of the 30 the book called the 30 which is a great book written by Tumi Sambodha okay so i'm going to this is Sambodham Jawa he's pledging to compose the work and again in buddhism this is a tradition that at the beginning of an important project we promise to finish it or die first And then you know any lama at this point in Tibet would point out that there are books in the Tengyer which stop in the middle. And it means the author died. It stops in the middle of a sentence. The author dropped dead right at that point. So you either finish it or you die, but there's no you don't give up, okay? And that applies to you at home who are going to finish this study of Tibetan grammar, okay? All right. Uh every 10-year-old in the monastery memorizes this book, okay? which is very easy to memorize. Okay, we're going to do two more short verses and then call it quits for today. Okay, so this video will be a little longer than the other ones, but simple. Okay, we've had this word already. It's give me this word. Yang. 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 Okay. High tone. Yang. Yang meaning melody. Yeah, yeah, good. Or saras, right? Uh which in that case means ocean, but that's a different story. uh yang means uh melody uh key of this is what chawa meaning we had just future tense do to do i will do here chawa as a verb the deed okay the deed uh selpo we already had sel clear yeah meaning clear and this is the adjective selpo means clear uh and this ru is the adverbial ly cut off rather than added as r so it's not sel por it's broken off which is legal and it's equivalent to sel por but this is sel por why because of uh, meter he needed meter pop 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 okay yang ki chawa sel por okay so he couldn't say yang ki chawa sel por okay <laughs> uh And this is a case where we read across the line of verse, okay? We we go to the next piece of the next line and include it syntactically back with the first line. So selporu selporu chepa. They do. They do a clarification or they make clear the action of the yang So now you have to learn to the first two grammar words you're going to learn in this text are yang say yang, yang. and selje selje yang yang and selje. selje okay yang means in in the context of grammar it means a vowel okay yang and then selje is means a, a consonant and we mentioned already that in the title of his book he used a pun where he said I'm going to clarify it because the word for consonant in Tibetan is clarifier okay so now he's making another pun okay selporu che means selche selporu che pa means clarify ye okay selporu che pa which which is shortened to selche which means consonant okay as opposed to a vowel okay But here he's making a joke. Uh these things make clear the actions of the vowels. He's making a pun, okay? He's trying to see if you'll get hung up on the word selje, okay? But you're not gonna. Okay? And he's giving she four four of them, okay? Which are say e, e u, u e, e o. o. Okay? Uh Why didn't he just say e u a o yang shi yin? 
Why didn't he just say E, U, A, and O are the four vowels? Why, why, why do you mess around with all this? They clarify the vowel. They make the vowel clear. Is this writing poetry? How many vowels are there? Four. How many vowel sounds are there? Five. There are five. A, I, U, A, O. Say A. E, U, A, O. Walla, walla. Bing, bang. Okay. Uh, so A uh, uh, is called the natural vowel. It's called inherent in all uh, Tibet, Tibetan and Sanskrit letters. Every consonant has its own A, uh, unless otherwise indicated. Okay? By a vowel sign, a written vowel sign, uh, all, all Tibetan and Sanskrit so that we don't say A, B, C, D in Tibetan. We don't say Ki, K, Ki, D, Ki in, in Sanskrit. Every A, B, C has the same vowel. They wouldn't use E on uh, B and use A on A. They would say E, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, D, G, K, L, M, N, M, B. You see, they, they would use the same vowel, and it makes more sense, right? So ka ka ga ga and ka ga ga you like that ka 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 ga. They use the same vowel, okay? If the vowel is, if you wish a different vowel sound, you must clarify with a symbol. That's he's make. That's the joke he's making, okay? Hidden in here is that. Otherwise, you don't know what the heck he's talking about. So there's not four vowels. There's five, but there are four vowel signs, four vowel symbols. Which are the Giko, Segiko, Shabkyu, Dengbu, Naro. You finished that already. So we can move on to the next, since we have a few minutes, let's move on to the next verse and throw it in with the vowels. Okay. Read this first too. Selche. Good. Selche, Selche, which means what? No. Yeah, but it means, in grammar, it means a consonant. A consonant. What are they? Ka. Ka. It, ka. Ka is A in Tibetan, okay? A, B, C, D, okay? Ka. Sok. Sok means etc. and so on. Etc. is much more used in Tibetan and Sanskrit, adi, than in uh, English, okay? They often say uh, A and the rest, and when they want to say A, B, C. So it's much more common. Because lists are known by people. The five skandhas are known. You don't say five skandhas. You don't say uh, f form, feelings, discrimination, other factors, and, and awareness. You don't say that. You, say, you just say, you know, you know, form and the rest. You know, they know. Everybody knows. So, and the rest is much more common in Sanskrit and Tibetan. Uh, the consonants are ka and all the others, so, etc., and there are 30, which is why I thought the name of Tumisambodha's work might indicate that it treats the 30 consonants, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Sumju, yin. yin. There are. There are. Okay. The th it's literally there is. Okay. The, the consonants are 30, consisting of ka and the rest. Okay. So he just gave you. Uh, all the vowels and all the consonants, all right? All the written vowels and all the consonants, okay? So his next job is to give you the suffix letters and the prefix letters, which we've already done in, in earlier videos, but that'll be our next subject, the subject of our next video. He will treat uh, the 10 suffix letters and then he'll treat the five prefix letters and then he'll move on to more the, the eight grammar cases, uh, which we find in Tibetan. And then I'd, I'd say there's probably another 10 grammar categories which are traditional to teach. So we'll go through the eight grammar cases, which are taken from the eight grammar cases of Sanskrit, artificially. And then we'll, then we'll move into what are called sort of like categories of grammar, uh, grammatical ideas okay, in Tibetan. For example, negation. Like, there are four words for not in Tibetan. Ma, mi, min, me. 
and, and we'll go into those. We'll, so we'll cover that after we cover the eight grammar cases. So, he's introduced us to the four vowel signs and the five vowels and the 30 consonants. consonants. Okay, which you've covered already in earlier videos. If you haven't got those down, I suggest you go back and master them. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you in our next Tibetan video for prefix and suffix letters.